Live. Hi everybody, my name is Jenny Evenstein. We are here at Tel Aviv University at the Wikimed course. I'm very happy to uh, host today Dr. James Hellman from uh, English Wikipedia, uh, Wiki Project Medicine, and uh, the Wikimedia Board actually. And James, um, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm very happy to know you. James? Can you hear us? Um, yes. Yep, you, you just broke up a little bit there, Shani. Do you want me to go ahead? Yes, please do. Perfect. Great. Well, look, thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'm going to give you a talk here about where Wikipedia fits in the world of medicine. So first of all, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a small town emergency physician. Um, I live in this great big country called Canada, right down the, in the little corner there where the arrow is uh, pointing. Um, and I have some academic affiliations. I am a, um, I'm faculty at the University of British Columbia, which is about 1,000 kilometers from where I live. Um, back in 2008, I was working a night shift um, in the emergency department. I was looking around the internet, and I came across this article that was horrible. It was full of errors, and I thought, oh my god, this is really bad. And then I noticed there was an edit button. And I hit the edit button, and I realized that I could fix the internet. Um, we, what's that, Jenny? We can see you. It would be nice to see you for a sec. Ah, certainly. Um, um, so, uh, screen. Here you are, perfect. Hello. Perfect, excellent. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Great. Let me just uh, pull back up the uh, presentation here. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, you know, so 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 back in two thousand and eight was when I first realized that that I was able to make improvements to Wikipedia, that I was able to fix the internet, and I've been an active volunteer ever since. Um, So, you know, the first question is, does the internet matter? And <clears throat> I'd like to argue yes and back it up by a little bit of data. Here is where the, these are the main sources of national and international news for people in the United States broken down by age. What we see is we see that, you know, back in 2000, the internet was, was a very little used source of information, but the frequency of its use has grown tremendously between 2001 and 2013. As of 2013, <clears throat> the internet is the primary source of both national and international news for people in the United States for the age group under 50. And of course, you know, as people get older, um, every expectation is that the internet is going to become a more prominent source of information for people of all ages. <coughs> Now, if we look at healthcare specifically, you know, in the average year, um, uh, the average American sees their doctor three times. If we're generous and we say that each of these visits is 20 minutes in duration, that means that the average person is spending an hour each year with a physician. However, they're spending, <coughs> excuse me, they're spending 52 hours a year on the internet looking up healthcare information. So if you want to have a positive impact on people's health, we need to make sure that the internet is right and that the internet has information in a language that they understand. So who here uses Wikipedia? <coughs> um, a little bit difficult in this format here. I guess people would put up their hands. Um, I assume most of you, um, you know, we have looked at other, uh, we've looked at other groups. You know, we've asked the question, is Wikipedia read by nearly everyone? And what we have found is that, yes, Wikipedia is very extensively read. Now, with respect to some numbers, uh, Wikipedia is currently the seventh most popular website in the world, the first four being Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Yahoo. It gets about a half a billion visitors each month. These visitors look at about 20 billion paid uses of content. And mobile readership, 
over the last 10 years has skyrocketed, and now almost half our readership is via people's uh, cell phones. Now, if we look at medical readership specifically, what we find is we find that um, uh, in 2013, Wikipedia had 160,000 articles that pertain to medical topics across 250 languages. Uh, these 160,000 articles got about 7 billion page views in 2013, which represents about 3% of all page views for English Wikipedia. So people care a great deal about health content. About half of medical readership occurred in English, um, with the next most popular languages being Spanish and German. And you know, if we look at certain specific groups of individuals and their use of Wikipedia's medical content, what we find is between half and all of physicians are using Wikipedia in clinical practice to look up information. 35 to 70 percent of pharmacists admit to its use, and 94 percent of medical students are using Wikipedia. In fact, Wikipedia is the single most used medical uh, most used medical resource for medical students while they're studying. 20 to 60 percent. Um, uh, of journalists are using Wikipedia, and it's also frequently used by policymakers as we from time to time catch them um, uh, copying and pasting uh, from Wikipedia. So <clears throat> there's a paper back in 2013 um, uh, you know, which found this 94% of medical student number, and they asked these students, they followed up with the question, why do you turn to Wikipedia when you have access to the world's best medical resources. You know, these were students from a mid American university. They had access to up to date, they had access to world class textbooks, and yet they're still turning to Wikipedia as their primary source of information as they study. And the students responded, well, Wikipedia is easy to access, and I can understand the Wikipedia content. <clears throat> and we additionally compared myself and, and a computer scientist by the name of Andrew West, we compared Wikipedia's readership with respect to that of other frequently used healthcare resources out there. Um, and what we found back in, in uh, July of 2014 is it appears that Wikipedia is one of the most, if not the most used medical resource globally. What we find is we find that um, the NIH has similar readership to Wikipedia, WebMD has about half the readership of um, Wikipedia, with other prominent sources rapidly having decreasing readership following that. Next question, does Wikipedia cover nearly everything? And it is definitely getting there, at least in English. If one was to take the English Wikipedia and print it out in uh, volumes the size of the Encyclopedia Britannica, this is the size of bookshelf that what one would need as of um, a year and a half ago. What we see here is a, <clears throat> a person of about six feet tall on the left, and, and um, to the, that person's left we see a row of bookshelves, and each one of those little blue lines represents one volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Wikipedia is the largest reference work on the internet. It's equivalent to about 2,000 volumes of the Encyclopedia. Um, there are 36 million articles in 287 languages, and now there's more than 5 million articles in English. And if one was to do the same calculation for Wikipedia's medical content as of 2013, one would find it would take 127 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica to print out our medical content <clears throat> in all languages without the pictures. So definitely a great deal of content. Next question, does Wikipedia have a huge number of, of, of editors? And the answer to this question here is more complicated. It's sort of yes and sort of no. Um, <clears throat> I guess you're all here because you're here to learn how to edit Wikipedia, and we're, we're excited to have you. Um, with respect to Wikipedia generally, anyone can edit Wikipedia, but not everyone does. There's about 80,000 people who make more than five contributions to Wikipedia a month. There's about 12,000 people who make more than 100 contributions a month. All these individuals are volunteers working for free, 
they have formed some self-governing communities with, with which to regulate themselves. Now, if we look at medical editors specifically, however, this is a much, much smaller group of individuals. In 2013, there were 270 editors who made more than 250 edits in the entire year to medical content. Half of these individuals are working in English, and half of these individuals uh, were working in the other 250 languages in which we have medical content. Back in 2013, we reached out to these individuals. Um, uh, we sent them a survey to try to get more information regarding their background. Of those who responded, half of our core group of editors are healthcare professionals, physicians, nurses, paramedics. About half of them had a master's, PhD, or an MD. <clears throat> About uh, an additional 30% had a bachelor's degree, so a very highly educated group of individuals. With respect to gender, 80% um, replied that they were female, 10% stated they were, uh, I mean 80% replied they were male, 10% replied they were female, and the last 10% either would rather not say or categorize themselves as other. While we have this gender inequality, we're not quite sure, but it is something that we're, we're actively looking at and we're actively trying to address. You know, many within our movement feel that we would be a better encyclopedia if half of our editors were female and half of our editors were male. <clears throat> a psychologist from the United Kingdom uh, did a survey of the core editors of Wikipedia a couple of years back as well to so try to figure out why those who contribute to Wikipedia in their free time do so. And what she discovered was that <clears throat> there was four main groups of ideas regarding why we edit. She found that those who edit Wikipedia do so to learn the material themselves. You know, this is, this is continuing medical education for many of us. Those who edit Wikipedia feel positive about Wikipedia generally. You know, we see this as being a useful source for uh, the world. We enjoy reading medical information and putting it into our own words. And finally, those who edit Wikipedia feel a responsibility to the wider world. You know, we, many people go into medicine to, you know, as we believe it's a noble profession, it's one in which we can help other people. Um, we also see Wikipedia the same way. We see Wikipedia as a way to help our fellow citizens. We believe all people deserve access to high quality healthcare information, and we see Wikipedia as a way of achieving this goal. Now, a question we often get from academics is, is Wikipedia reliable? And the answer to this is sort of yes and sort of no. Um, it you know, with respect to reliability, it depends on how you define it and what you compare Wikipedia to. You know, to <clears throat> one thing that is true is there is no perfect source. If you spend enough time reading textbooks, if you spend enough time reading journal articles, you'll begin picking up errors in all these sources. The foundation of Wikipedia is not truth. It's verifiability. And our hope is that if we use the best available sources, we will end up with the best available content. Back in 20, uh, 2005 and 2012, Wikipedia was compared to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And Wikipedia was found to be similar in accuracy as Britannica. There was, back in 2005, per article, there was four errors in Wikipedia. Um, well, there was three errors in each Britannica article. Additionally, Wikipedia has an internal peer review system, system for articles in Wikipedia to re reach the highest uh, quality on Wikipedia's quality scale. There needs to be, uh, they need to pass Wikipedia's internal peer review process. Another look at the reliability of Wikipedia was <clears throat> a survey that took place in the United Kingdom. Basically, they went around London and they asked people on the street, how much do you trust those who write Wikipedia compared to how much do you trust journalists from different uh, <clears throat> sources? And you know, the most encouraging um, aspect of this study was that they found that you know, while people are buying the sun in the mirror, two famous tabloids in the United Kingdom, they don't actually believe what they're reading. <clears throat> 
And the other surprising outcome of this um, um, survey was that people's trust in Wikipedia is on par with their trust in the BBC, one of the UK's most well-respected uh, sources of journalism. The New York Times back in 2014 also came out with a piece looking at Wikipedia's content on Ebola and comment on how Wikipedia had become a trusted source of information on this topic. The foundation of Wikipedia is reference, reference, reference. Um, here's an example of one of Wikipedia's highest quality articles. This is the, the section on, on causes for the article on schizophrenia. And what we find is we find that Basically, for high quality content, every sentence is referenced so that anybody reading a Wikipedia article can verify the content for themselves. We reference more densely than textbooks, we reference more densely than journal articles because we're not able to verify that. I would like to ask Wikipedia. you a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, certainly, go ahead. I'm Professor Ilan Amir. I'm an academic advisor. Why many of my faculty think don't trust the Wikipedia? I tell students that they are not ready, that they will read over there and use it as reference and things like that. Can you repeat the question, please? Why many faculty are not ready that students will read Wikipedia as an additional source of information and they tell them we don't trust Wikipedia? Um, I think, you know, I think that position is an unfortunate one. Uh, you know, I agree completely that Wikipedia is not a perfect source of information. You know, I spend a huge amount of time trying to make Wikipedia better, not because I believe Wikipedia is an excellent or a perfect source. I spend a great deal of time trying to improve Wikipedia because I know Wikipedia is what the world is reading. So I think, you know, you, you know, as an academic, you have two options. You can either go around and you can tell people not to use Wikipedia, um, and you know, looking at the readership of Wikipedia, we can we can tell how, how how effective that is. You know, we've had academics going around and telling students not to use Wikipedia for ten years, and I don't think it has made any difference at all. Um, or you can go around, and you can say, hey, I know the world's using Wikipedia, I know my students are using Wikipedia, so I'm going to make Wikipedia a better source of information than it is today. And that's sort of you know the path I have taken. Um, I don't believe I can convince people not to use Wikipedia, but I do know I can make Wikipedia better. And thank you, Shani. Yes, so, so you know, um, Will, Wikipedia had, you know, it was new five, ten years ago, um, and, you know, it takes a long time to, to shift the opinions of academics, uh, and I think, you know, as more and more people are using it, as Wikipedia has improved over time, academics, more and more of them are now agreeing that Wikipedia is a suitable source for students to start with to get an overview of the topic in question. But myself, I don't try to convince people to use Wikipedia. I try to convince people to edit Wikipedia. You know, as students and as academics, you should be coming to Wikipedia very critically, and you should be coming to Wikipedia with an eye to how can I make this better. You know, you're gonna, you're the expert to the future, and we want you to come and you know summarize the world's knowledge and add it to um, this shared academic resource. So, um, so we were. We were discussing, you know, how Wikipedia has become more and more referenced over time. Um, uh, you know, back in 2007, Wikipedia didn't really require references for the content it contained. In 2007, we really changed our emphasis. We really started saying, hey, if this content doesn't have a reference, there's a good chance it's going to be removed from the English Wikipedia. So how have we done with respect to referencing Wikipedia's uh, medical content specifically? This is a look at how uh, the total number of references supporting Wikipedia's medical content in all languages 
has changed over time. And we have seen that the number of references has ne nearly tripled between 2009 and 2013. Do we have another question? I think I, I've asked students to, um, uh, I've basically asked students to post it on the chat so uh, we can collect all the questions and you can answer uh, at the Q&A part. So go ahead with your lecture. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. Sure. So I will. Uh, we, we we will have we'll have a fair bit of time to run through questions at the end. <clears throat> we additionally looked uh, in 2013. Um, you know, we found that the number of references supporting Wikipedia's medical content has increased dramatically over the last five six years, and we looked at the subgroup of references supporting Wikipedia's medical content that come from academic journals, and we looked at you know, what academic journals are most frequently used as source material for Wikipedia. And the most well-respected journals are also the most frequently used journals as references for Wikipedia. So Science, The Lancet, JAMA, The Cochrane Collaboration are our most used journal sources. And previously, I touched on Wikipedia's internal peer review process. Basically, every medical article on Wikipedia has a, a rating scale. It goes from stub to featured article. Uh, medicine has about 60 featured articles, about 200 good articles. So less than 1% of all Wikipedia articles have passed or uh, all me medical articles have passed their own internal peer review process. So we realize that there, you know, Wikipedia is not perfect. We realize that there's a great deal more work to do, which is why we're trying to recruit further academics and further students to become involved. One additional effort we are working on to improve the reliability and respectability of Wikipedia's medical content is a, a number of us brought one Wikipedia medical article through Wikipedia's internal peer review process uh, a couple of years back. We brought it to featured article. We then submitted this article to the journal Open Medicine. Um, and this article went through the journal's peer, peer review process it passed peer review, and it's now uh, published in a static format and PubMed indexed under the author's real names. So, you know, this is an opportunity to get academic credit for Wikipedia through collaboration with journals. PLOS Medicine is also interested in taking um, um, uh, articles from Wikipedia that have been brought to a very high standard and bringing them through their own uh, internal peer review processes and potentially publishing them under the auto, uh, author's real names. Here's the example of the article that, that has been published under this format. Uh, it was published by myself, um, an internist from the United Kingdom, a virologist from the United Kingdom, and a gentleman who's working at the CDC. The article was on, on dengue fever. And the interesting thing is, you know, it was published in static format. Um, you can see the version on, on PubMed Commons. And the article on Wikipedia continues to improve. You know, today we now have a very, um, we have a vaccine that looks exceedingly promising. Um, um, uh, for dengue fever, which didn't exist when this article was published um, um, in the Journal Open Medicine. Another effort we're working on is something called the Wikiversity Journal of Medicine. It's an open access journal. It was started in 2014. It lives on, on a Wikipedia sister site called Wikiversity. Um, it's published about 20 articles. Uh, it, it's not PubMed indexed yet, but the benefit this open access journal has compared to other open access journals is there aren't any associated costs to publishing uh, in this journal. Many other open access journals charge between 1,000 and, and 4,000 for the publication of a single uh, article. <clears throat> now, with respect to the quality of Wikipedia, uh, there is many misperceptions among uh, the popular press that Wikipedia is anarchy. It isn't. Wikipedia contains many levels of quality assurance. The first level when a new edit occurs is that edit is looked at by bots. These are very smart computer programs that analyze the edit. And for low-level vandalism, the bots take care of the majority of these um, uh, issues. The second level of quality assurance is something called new change control. So when a new editor makes a change to Wikipedia, <clears throat> this new change ends up on a list of new changes. And you know, a human being who 
is likely not an expert in the subject matter in question, takes a look at the edit in more depth to say, is this a positive contribu contribution to Wikipedia? Is this a negative contribution to Wikipedia? And sort of deals with it from there. The third level of quality assurance is something called watch lists. As soon as you know one registers an account on Wikipedia, they're given a watch list. And you can basically take articles you're interested in. You can put them on your watch list such that you're notified when uh, people make changes to that article. So for example, if you look at the article on HIV AIDS, there's about 500 people who have that article on their watch list. Um, so when changes occur to a major topic, it's often being uh, reviewed in near real time by dozens, if not hundreds, of other people. The next level of quality assurance is something is a group of uh, well-respected editors called administrators. The, you know, some people come to Wikipedia and they're attempting to promote themselves, or they consistently make poor quality uh, edits to Wikipedia. And these individuals can be blocked from making further contributions. Additionally, administrators have the ability to protect or semi-protect certain articles on Wikipedia. And what that does is that limits the editing of that article to established editors of Wikipedia. So for example, some topics like um, abortion for obvious reasons are semi-protected so that only established editors can make changes to them. A new layer of quality assurance that we launched back in August of, uh, of 2014 um, <clears throat> is a copy and paste detection bot. This was done in collaboration with the organization called Turnitin. Turnitin is um, uh, basically build software that determines whether or not um, uh, student papers have been published or content within student papers have been published by others in the past. And Turnitin basically agreed to give us free access to their software. We built a bot that checks every new edit over a certain size. We basically cut out that edit. We ship that content to Turnitin. And that con uh, Turnitin then determines whether or not that content has been previously published. And then human beings follow up to determine whether or not plagiarism or uh, copy and paste issues exist inside that edit. Now, we were looking at running this on Hebrew Wikipedia, I think it was running briefly, um, um, and this was this was uh, uh, made by by uh, a, a Hebrew Wikipedian by the name of Aaron. <clears throat> now, next, I want to move on and discuss one of my favorite collaborations, and this is something called the Medical Translation Project. Basically, it involves three steps. It involves improving the articles in English. It involves translating articles, um, medical articles, from English into as many other languages. And finally, um, it involves improving access to uh, this content to uh, the people of the world. And <clears throat> there's two, we're working on two tracks of articles. We're working on, on full articles that vary between 2,000 and 10,000 words. And we're working on short articles that are three to four paragraphs. We're hoping to develop 1,000 articles that are three to four paragraphs in length on key healthcare topics. And then finally, we're working to translate this content into as many other languages as possible with a number of partners, including Translators Without Borders and Rubric. So far, we're working in 100 plus languages, and we have translated more than 4 million words of text. So why is this needed? Um, every day, thousands of people die because of lack of uh, healthcare, and a major factor in this is poor uh, access to healthcare information. Um, more than half of people in Af from Africa said that a friend or family member could have been saved if they'd had information in their own language. In Africa, the difficulty of uh, visiting a physician is that often doctors there will not speak your language. You know, they're working through an interpreter. Even in my own country, many people believe uh, that, you know, if their child has diarrhea and vomiting, um, they should not give their child further fluid. They think, you know, I have mothers come to me and they say, every time I give my child something to drink, they either throw it up or they have diarrhea. So stop giving them anything to drink. And that is a potentially fatal misunderstanding. Um, you know, if you live in the developed world, you can bring, you know, you can bring your family to a physician who can correct that misunderstanding. However, in the developing world, that might not exist. And um, so we're working to correct this. If we look at the internet 
by language here up in the left upper hand corner, what we see is those of us who speak English are exceedingly lucky. 60% of the internet is there for us. Um, another 30% of the internet is in these big 10 European languages, but there are 5,000 languages in the world, and there is very little content on the internet for those other 4,000 uh, 990 languages. If one looks at the world by language, one sees that only 6% of the global population speak English. Another 16% speak these big 10 European languages, but by far the majority of the global population speaks um, a, a language that is poorly covered on the internet. Wikipedia, well, better than the internet as a whole, is no, does not match the uh, uh, world by language, and there still is a great deal of work to do. <clears throat> One of the successes we had in this translation project last year um, is, as we're all aware, there was an outbreak of Ebola in, in um, Western Africa, primarily affecting Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Nigeria. Uh, and we, back in the early part of this outbreak, developed content on Ebola in English. We sent it out to our partners to get it translated into as many other languages as possible. We managed to help create Ebola content in 115 languages. Um, and then we partnered with Microsoft, a researcher from Microsoft, and we asked them, you know, is the content we're creating, is it getting out to the people who need it most, i.e., is it being used by those in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea? Um, um, and so the researcher from Microsoft, he had access to all of Bing's search data. Microsoft collects absolutely everything about you. And he said, he looked at the data and he found that Wikipedia was the single most used website for people looking up Ebola content in, the, in each of these countries. We were more used than CNN, we were more used than the CDC, and we were more used than the World Health Organization. And <clears throat> We look specifically at how extensively uh, the English content is being used. Uh, in 2014, our Ebola content got about 50 million paid views. We estimate that our content in other languages got a, a similar number of paid views. So in that single year, this content was likely viewed about 100 million times. The next step, uh, um, so, so the steps of the process is basically we work to improve the content in English. Um, we are concentrating on simple articles uh, currently. We started working on full articles, but we realized that was often too much content for many of the languages we're trying to translate into. Plus, we believe that having a greater breadth of content is more important than having a greater depth of content. With respect to writing these short overview articles, simple is key. Uh, we're trying to keep the content to three to four paragraphs. We're working to reference uh, every sentence, and the topics we're working on include key human diseases, essential medicines, sanit and sanitation and engineering topics. With respect to writing a medical article, or with respect to writing a medication article, these articles cover the definitions and uses of medications, they cover the side effects, use in pregnancy, and how the medication works, and then finally there's a little bit about the history and cost of, uh, of the medication as well. All these articles uh, are being reviewed by me before they're put on the translation list. And currently, we have about 250 articles that are ready for translation into other languages. Here's an example of one article that we're translating. This is the article on rabies. Rabies is still uh, a, a common disease globally. Um, rabies is entirely preventable uh, through vaccines and through proper treatment following getting bitten by, uh, uh, by a dog or bat most commonly and yet globally it still results in 26,000 deaths a year. Now, with respect to adding content to Wikipedia, um, you know, we prize high quality secondary sources. This includes stuff like meta-analyses, um, such as produced by the Cochrane Collaboration. And, you know, if you, when you're adding content, we want you to think, you know, if you're summarizing a meta-analysis, we want you to think of this as putting it into a newspaper headline. We really want the content to be condensed and to be made more simple. So we're shooting for you know one or two sentence overviews of many of these meta-analysis. 
Um, we don't need to add the publication type. We don't need. We don't typically add the authors' names um, uh, or even the publication sources. All this content can be found in the reference. So, for example, we will take a meta analysis like this. You know, music for insomnia and adults, um, which provides you a great deal of information. Um, and we'll summarize it. You know, the, the, the author's conclusions was the finding of this review provides evidence that music may be effective for subjective sleep quality in adults with insomnia symptoms. And we will summarize it down to music may improve insomnia in adults, just as an example. And then the second step of the process is taking this uh, vetted content and translating it into as many other languages as possible. Uh, we began working on this in 2012 with an organization called Translator Without Borders. We're using all human translators. We're not using any machine translation uh, because machine translation, it just isn't accurate enough at this point in time. Um, and additionally, if you look at you know, Google Translate, one of the most prominent uh, um, machine translation sites, Google Translate works in 68 languages. We're trying to generate content in 250 languages. We have a number of translation workflows. Um, you know, some people prefer to work in WordPerfect documents. So what we're doing is we're taking this content in WordPerfect documents. We're handing it out to people to translate um, uh, in that format from one language to the next. And then we're integrating this content back into Wikipedia. Some groups are using Hackpad and Facebook. Uh, we have a new translation tool uh, on Wikipedia, which I'm sure Shani is going to show you. Um, it makes translation much easier. Um, and one of the exciting things is some languages have, you know, taken the content we have translated from English into their language, and they have improved it further. So, for example, in um, Farsi, oh, perfect. In, in Farsi. We translated the article on HIV AIDS in English into Farsi. We translated the entire article. It was in integrated into um, uh, the Farsi Wikipedia. And that local community then added an entire section specifically on HIV AIDS in Iran. Uh, very applicable to Farsi speakers, less um, um, uh, applicable to English speakers. Another collaboration we've been working uh, on is we've been working with Wikimedia Taiwan, the local uh, chapter uh, of the Wikimedia movement in that country. Uh, this started in 2014. Um, we're working with the National Taiwan University College of Medicine. Uh, the students there have translated more than 60 of these short articles from English into Chinese over a relatively short period of time. Um, the students have found this work to be quite useful. One student said that, you know, doing this translation from English into Chinese, he's learned a lot. Um, many students in many part of the, many medical students in many part of the uh, world, they're studying a fair bit in English, and yet when they get out into practice, they need to communicate with their patients in Chinese. So this student found that doing this project from translation from English into Chinese, using easy to understand language, has helped him to better communicate with his patients. We have been lucky. We have found, also found some amazing language champions. Uh, we, uh, we had a retired physician uh, from India join us <clears throat> by the name of Dr. Subhas. Um, he works on a small Wikipedia called Oriya. There's 33 million people who speak this language. Uh, they only have about 15 active editors in the entire um, um, language of, uh, of, of Oriya. And he himself has translated more than 200 articles of these short articles from uh, Oriya into his uh, native language, I mean, from English into his native language. And then the final part of this project is the digital last file. And the issue is that those in the developing world need access to this content. But they, also, they often have poor access to computers. They have poor access to the internet. But there's sort of this silver lining. Cell phones are nearly everywhere. About six uh, out of seven people globally have a cell phone, even in the developing world. But the difficulty is data charges are expensive. Uh, so what we're working to do is we're working to convince cell phone companies to give Wikipedia access in the developing world without data charges. And we have done surprisingly well with this. We now have more than 70 cell phone company partners who are giving free Wikipedia access, so Wikipedia access without uh, data charges, um, in the countries listed in green that we see ahead of us. 
Another effort we've been working on to improve uh, access to Wikipedia's medical content where there's poor access to the internet is we have taken all of Wikipedia's medical content and we have packaged it in an offline medical app. This was launched back in two, uh, uh, June of 2015 in partnership with the Swiss chapter of the Wikimedia movement. It's currently only available for uh, Android. Uh, one of the difficulties is it is a big app. You know, the app is 800 uh, megabytes, so it takes up a fair bit of room on people's phones. But it does include all pharmaceutical articles, all um, um, disease articles, um, and all anatomy articles. It just exists in English right now, but we're hoping to develop this uh, in other languages soon. We're also working to convince cell phone companies to install this medical content before they ship phones to people. <clears throat> We've also been working on partnership with another a number of other organizations. Uh, for example, we have a partnership with Cancer Research UK. They're the largest uh, cancer charity in the United Kingdom. They went out in mid-2014 and they hired a very experienced Wikipedian by the name of John Brin. Um, he helped that organization come to Wikipedia, taught them the norms of Wikipedia, help them improve uh, our content on pancreatic cancer, brain cancer, and esophageal cancer. Additionally, this charity uh, donated more than 500 images that were cancer-related to Wikipedia, which have spread across uh, more than 20 languages of Wikipedia. And they're training people at, at that charity on how to edit Wikipedia as well. Now, there are, you know, well, Ebola got a great deal of press this last year. My position is that there are many, many topics more important than Ebola. There are many diseases, many healthcare conditions that result in the death of many more people than Ebola ever has. And these conditions continue year after year to result in the death of millions. So, for example, diarrhea, which is very much preventable through um, um, good sanitation, which is very much treatable through simple measures like oral rehydration solution, continues to kill more than one million children globally each year. Same thing with malaria. Malaria still results in the deaths of millions. And malaria as well is very preventable, um, you know, through the use of bed nets uh, and very treatable through the use of, of, of medication in, in, in those who need them. So to finish, I would like to just play a quick video of um, one of the reasons why Wikipedia and what we do matters. If I can get it to work. Ah, there we go. Hi. This is a letter which me and my classmates, my classmates wrote to access to Wikipedia for free. It goes as follows. Open letter to South C, MTN, Vodacom, and ATA. We are learners in grade 12 at Silinjong High School, Joslovo Park, Nunatin, Cape Town. We recently heard that in some other African countries like Kenya and Uganda, cell phone providers are offering their customers free access to Wikipedia. We think this is a wonderful idea and would really like to encourage you also to make the same offer here in South Africa. Our school does not have the library. 90% of us have cell phones, but it is expensive for us to buy airtime. So if we could get free access to Wikipedia, it would make a huge difference to us. Normally, when we do research, Wikipedia is one of the best sites, and there is information on just about every topic. Think of the boost that it will give us as students and to the whole education system of South Africa. Our education system needs help, and having access to Wikipedia would make a very positive difference. Thank you. 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 Okay, so <coughs> Shani just mentioned you had already seen that video. Um, I find it inspirational and. Uh, I've seen it, of course, many times as well. But perfect. Well, let's let's um um. That's uh, let's end there and uh, and and take some questions. Yes, yes. James, can we see you again?
would be easier, and I think. Yes. Let me. Um, perfect. There we are. Perfect. So um, just to mention, we also have uh, you've met before Professor Elon Hamel, who is the head of the uh, pathology department here at Sackler, and um, the academic advisor of this course. And we also have um, Dr. Neta Hussain uh, from India. Uh, she just graduated and uh, also a contributor, so it's great to have both of you here. And students, this is your time. Uh, do feel free to ask questions uh, one at a time. So first is Sagi. No? No. So who's first, guys? Come on, don't be shy. Hi, Hi everyone. Everybody. Um, first of all, thank you very much. It was an enriching hangout. And I would like to ask you, was it difficult for you to be also a doctor and a Wikipedian? Um, yeah. So, so the question was, is it difficult for me to be a doctor and a Wikipedian? Yeah. Um, you know, I have found working on Wikipedia has made me a better doctor. You know, you go through medical school and your professors tell you all sorts of stuff, and you know, you get onto a practice and you begin realizing that some of it wasn't exactly correct. Um, and, you know, looking at the evidence behind your practice as a physician, in my opinion, is very important. You know, much of what we do, we do based on tradition. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, practicing some aspects of medicine based on tradition. But I feel it's important to know, you know, what part of your practice is based on evidence and what part of your practice is based on tradition. And I sort of got that granularity of detail through the work on Wikipedia. Um, with respect to how time consuming Wikipedia is, I have, you know, I currently work half time as an emergency physician. Uh, I moved from working full time to half time about a year and a half ago so that I could spend more time making Wikipedia better. You know, I, I believe so strongly in the importance of this as a source of information for the world that I have cut back on my real job to volunteer to do this. Oh, you're muted. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, I also think that in the future I will be a Canadian and a doctor, so I hope it will. I hope I can succeed. Well, thank you. Excellent. We'd love to have you join us. Okay. The other thing, you know, I found Wikipedia to be a great way to learn as well. You know, often when you read stuff, you can read it, you can read it again, and it doesn't stick. I find that if you read something, you put it in your own words and you write it down, that, you know, what you've read, what you've, um, you know, sticks much better in your long-term memory and is a more powerful way to learn, um, to learn what you're doing. You know, some of, our, some of our most prolific contributors to Wikipedia, like Nessa, have been, um, um, you know, students, have been medical residents. James, can you tell the students maybe about how uh, working in Wikipedia um, influence your actual work as a doctor a bit more? <clears throat> yes, so, so how has work, working on Wikipedia influenced my um, uh, work as a physician? Uh, you know, one example is that I was working on the article on urinary tract infections, um, a very common problem, especially among um, um, women. And, you know, Typical practice is that, you know, we would give 
women would come in with symptoms of a bladder infection. We'd send off tests to determine whether or not they do have a bladder infection. We'd write them on a prescription for this bladder infection. We'd send them on their way. But there's many, many women out there who get frequent bladder infections. Uh, they'll get three or four of these a year. Um, they end up showing up in the emergency department at, you know, three, four, five o'clock in the morning. And if you look at the literature, one of the most um, um, most effective way, one of the most accurate diagnostic tests of a bladder infection is a woman's symptoms. So you don't actually need to do um, further tests to verify that someone has a bladder infection. And in fact, the literature supports giving women who have frequent bladder infections antibiotic repeats so that they can keep a course of antibiotics at home such that they can start hunting antibiotics as soon as they develop symptoms. So now I, you know, one thing that Wik editing Wikipedia has done is I now will give women who have frequent bladder infections refills for antibiotics such that they can take, they can begin these antibiotics without having to come into the emergency department at three o'clock in the morning. So just one small vignette on how, you know, looking at the literature, spending time working on Wikipedia has changed my medical practice. Okay, guys, any more I questions? I would like to ask you a question, can I? Yes, of sure. course. Yeah, I would like to know what is the attitude of Wikipedia uh, towards alternative medicine versus evidence-based medicine? Even I'm a chair of pathology, so you know immediately what is my attitude. <laughs> but I really would like to know your opinion and what, they, what currently is held in the English versions. So... <laughs> With, with respect to um, alternative medicine, Wikipedia, what we, within Wiki Project Medicine, what we try to do is emphasize the best available resources. And the sources that we view most highly are sources like the Cochrane Collaboration, the Center for Disease Control, sources from the World Health Organization. So we give the positions of, uh, of you know, these organizations greater weight than other organizations. So on English Wikipedia, alternative medicine has to have the same degree of evidence supporting it as that of traditional medicine. It needs to be, um, uh, you know, we're just trying to reflect the positions of the World Health Organization, of the Cochrane Collaboration, and if these organizations come out with information that is negative about alternative medicine, we will reflect those opinions. If these organizations come out with material that is positive um, with respect to a specific alternative medicine for a specific treatment, we will address it positively. Um, so, so, you know, much of alternative medicine is poorly supported by evidence. James, you're muted for some reason. Can you unmute and repeat the last sentence? Um, yes. So, so I, I'm not sure how much of that you caught, but but you know, we we tend to reflect the position of the World Health Organization, Cochrane Collaboration, um, uh, Center for Disease Control, and other mainstream, well-respected medical positions, and thus, uh, you know, our reflection of Wikipedia, uh, our, our reflection of alternative on alternative medicine on Wikipedia is an evidence-based one. We tend to say either that evidence doesn't exist, as often it doesn't, or, you know, that the evidence there is doesn't support the treatment in question for many alternative medicine practices. For some alternative medicine practices, there is evidence to support it, uh, and we reflect that position when there is. So, you know, for example, the use of probiotics in certain situations is evidence-based, and we reflect that, that evidence when it is available. James, there's a question on the chat box, if you can read it and, and refer to it. Um, okay, so so from, from Dachi, uh, do you think universities, doctors, and journals are afraid uh, about Wikipedia interrupting their monopoly over medical information? And what do you think about a world where all the medical information is free, um, the problem being most people don't really understand it, and the amount of information will just cause problems. So, um, so there's sort of two questions there. The first being, you know, are universities 
um, is the medical establishment afraid about Wikipedia? Um, I think there's certain aspects that are, you know, but there's many aspects that want to work with us, you know. So, for example, the NIH and the World Health Organization and the Cochrane Collaboration, we have partners with all three of those organizations. You know, they, like us, want to get high quality healthcare information out to as many people as possible. Um, they have great information. We have a tremendous abundance of readership. Uh, so we have been working together to try to make Wikipedia better. They see Wikipedia as very exciting. With, with respect to um, people getting access, the general population getting access to healthcare information, the world has shifted from a paternalistic interaction between physicians and patients. Um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, someone would go see their doctor, the doctor would tell them what to do, the patient would go out and simply do it. Practice has changed. You know, people have become more educated. People now want to play, many people now want to play an active role in their healthcare. Um, shared decision making within healthcare has risen over the last 10 years to great prominence. And to have shared decision making, you need to have the physician and you need to have the patient coming at the problem in question with a similar understanding of the literature. So, um, and you know, when you have patient encounters, you only have a brief period of time. So my I think it's very important to have well-educated, um, um, well-educated patients, you know. And within my practice, I will see children with rare genetic disorders, and the mother of the, these children know more about the disease than I do. Um, so I think physicians need to be more humble. You know, we need to, you know, we need to develop treatment plans with our patients rather than about our patients. Nessa, would you like to comment further? Students, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. I would like to ask you another question. Uh, we know that uh, Wikipedia depends only on uh, volunteer work. Uh, is there any uh, upcoming project that encourage volunteering in the world? So we can, we know that Wikipedia is so uh, non worldwide. So are you thinking about a uh, project uh, encouraging uh, volunteering, especially in the, in the medical domain? Thanks. Um, we we have um, we have a not for profit known as Wiki Project Med Foundation. Uh, you know, it's still a very small not for profit, and you know, we do stuff like this. Um, you know, Shani and I to encourage people to come in at Wikipedia. We're working with a number of medical schools. We're working with uh, uh, the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. Um, they have a project where medical students are spending four weeks working to develop Wikipedia's medical content. Um, you know, I, I speak at a number of conferences. I have other colleagues who go around and speak at conferences to raise awareness that, you know, Wikipedia is important in medicine and that anybody can come and edit Wikipedia. So there are efforts to increase volunteers. Uh, people are busy, you know, attracting people who are willing to work for free to write medical content in their free, free time is difficult. Um, but we continue the, you know, little bits here, little bits there to try to recruit and increase the number of people working on Wikipedia. I would like to comment that there is one option that is now, Shani can even say more than me, by the Israeli Statistical Association, that they make a competition now between students to write uh, all of the statistical and review everything, and there will be a very, very nice uh, prizes over there for the best written uh, arti articles and things like that. And really, the best Israeli statisticians are going to review those chapters. So I think that's one of the ways 
to attack students to write something in because very frequently students know how to write in Hebrew a chapter than the teacher. Certainly, this is um, this is a collaboration between Wikimedia Israel and um, National Statistics um, Center, um, and we can certainly think about doing something similar in medicine next year. I think. Perfect. Yeah, you know, there's there's lots of great opportunities to collaborate. Um, you know, I've reached out to a number of organizations. Most organizations are very excited to work with us. I also have a question. Uh, I mean, if I can. Um, James, you've told the students about working with translators without borders, and this is certainly, I mean, you're an English speaker, and certainly most of your contributions, if not all of them, are in English Wikipedia. What was the incentive to, um, I don't know, to, to begin even looking at the bigger picture and looking at the whole world, um, how it came to be, and why you chose to, you chose to do it in, in this specific way, if you can say something about that? Um, so, you know, I speak a couple languages. Um, uh, I speak English and French, and I speak a little bit of Portuguese. Uh, and a tiny little bit of Spanish. Uh, I have spent, um, you know, during my medical training, I had the opportunity to uh, do a couple of months of my training in Brazil. Um, and I love to travel. Uh, so, so, you know, I sort of, and, you know, during my medical training, I've always thought of working with the organization Medicine Sans Frontier, Doctors Without Borders. I've always believed that medicine is a global profession. Um, and I sort of, you know, I sort of fell into the translation project. Uh, back in 2012, I, I joined this, this mailing list called Health Information for All. It's basically um, uh, uh, a group of people who are interested in working in the area of global health. I have a great interest in the area of global health. And, you know, the, the 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 founder of Translators of Borders and, uh, approached me, and she's like, you know, this is what we do. We translate content from one language to another. Are you interested in collaborating? And you know, we sort of fell into this collaboration to take content and try to make it available in more languages. So it was sort of a roundabout a roundabout way I fell into this. I would recommend all of those who are interested in global health to look at joining um, a Health Information for All. They're, they're, they're a really interesting organization, a really uh, great way to build uh, connections with people who are doing you know, similar issues, you know, trying to address similar issues in global health. Can you maybe send a um, link to the, in the chat box? Yes, certainly. Let me, uh, I'll, uh, I'll Excellent. Um, we have a student who is logged in from, uh, from afar, and she wants to ask something. So another student is going to ask on her behalf. Hello? One sec. Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, her question is: As a part of student society, can you offer us a good way to encourage other students to edit? So, um, you know, I think I, I think a lot of what Wikipedia is missing is often there is a lack of the social element to editing. So, one thing that uh, Mount Sinai um, medical school has done, so this is a medical school in New York City, is they have created a Wikipedia student club where the medical students who are interested, and it's about 20 to 25 students each month, get together and, you know, get pizza, they gather in a room at the university, um, and they work together on Wikipedia. 
um, uh, you know, so that there's some people who know more about Wikipedia, there's some people who know less about Wikipedia, and they sort of help each other. Um, and of course, they have a social event, um, and they improve the content of Wikipedia. So, so that has been that has been one method that has seemed to be quite effective for them. And I'd be happy to connect you with their group as well if you're interested. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Let's, let's. Uh, would you rather translate from English Wikipedia if you can't fully understand what is written, or you would rather stay without the topic in your language? So, would you rather translate from English into um, your own language, whether you, you know, if, if you don't understand the English fully, or would you rather write content from scratch in your own language? Is that sort of the question you're, ans you're asking? It's not my question, but I think that's, yes, what you meant. Yeah, certainly. So um, the difficulty uh, with writing content from scratch in your own language, in many languages, there's simply no sources that exist. You know, so for Swahili, for many topics in Swahili, there is no content available in Swahili about the disease or the medication in question. So the only option, um, you know, often is to translate from another language into your language, if your language contains zero medical content. So many languages are old and rich and have a great deal of content uh, created by different sources. So you know, Hebrew has a, a lot of written documentation. You know, German, French, um, um, English, of course. But there's many languages in the world which don't have the resources. Um, um, in those languages, so translation is the only option, unfortunately. And you know, we're trying to change that. Thanks, James. Um, since Neta is also here and she's just uh, graduated, I've asked her to um, say something about her experience as a medical student. Um, well, now she's a doctor, but not so long ago, she was a student just like our students here, and she was editing Wikipedia as a student. And Meta, can you say something about your experience? What was the incentive? Why you did it? Um, I'm really happy to uh, meet a lot of medical students from Israel. Um, I hope uh, they keep up the enthusiasm and keep editing Wikipedia just like I did. Um, I started editing uh, during my first year of medical studies. Um, I started editing, I mean, I used to read Wikipedia even before I started editing because in India where I live, I had, um, I, I could not have access to some of the most uh, expensive textbooks. So I used, if, if I needed to learn much about, more about something, I had to either look up the internet or go to the library and sit there for hours looking up all the encyclopedias and all the standard reference textbooks. So I thought maybe if I can find a lot of information on Wikipedia itself, I can avoid the part of walking to the library and then looking up all the books. And that was how I started using Wikipedia as a reference material. Um, then uh, over time, I figured out that I could edit Wikipedia. And then I started editing articles uh, as and when I, I, I learned a topic. For example, if I learned about a particular muscle or a nerve or a blood vessel or anything for that matter, I used to read the topic first from my textbook and then I would look up the corresponding Wikipedia article and see if anything was missing and then I would expand the article with sufficient information. So that was, I mean, I started integrating Wikipedia with the process of learning so that, you know, it came side by side. So. I, I can't I can't say how much time I spent for editing Wikipedia and how much time I spent for studies. So everything became complimentary to me and the satisfaction of sharing knowledge with other people like me also gave me a lot of enthusiasm and that was why I kept on doing the same thing for the last five years. I mean I, I keep on editing Wikipedia both in uh, my native language which is Malayalam and in English. Um, I mostly edit in Malayalam and I do uh, yeah and occasionally I do edit medical content in English as well. So this is my story and I hope all of you, I mean uh, all the medical students who are in this uh, Google Hangout would 
also do the same or you would or you are very likely to find a lot of possibilities with Wikipedia just like I did you know you can uh, probably you will be able I mean you you can find um, some for some people it would be like adding links for some people it would be like expanding new expanding an existing article for some people it would be like creating new articles so there are lots of possibilities uh, you can also join the uh, uh, wiki project medicine um, and yeah there are so many things you can do on Wikipedia as a medical student and I hope you do that and uh, th and I hope that it helps you in your studies and in your future career as well thank you Students, do you have any questions to Netta or to Doc James that you haven't asked yet? Anyone? Okay, so I think let me one last one last comment. Sure, of course. Perfect. Yeah, so you know, one thing to keep in mind when editing Wikipedia, you know, I came to Wikipedia back in two thousand eight. Um, you know, the first edit I made to Wikipedia wasn't very good and it was reverted. Um, and, you know, I had a good mentor at that point, and, you know, the, the person who reverted me was, was a long-standing Wikipedian, um, um, and he, you know, explained why the edit I made wasn't very good, I wasn't using a very good source, was, was the underlying issue, um, and, you know, I then learned from that, you know, writing, writing an encyclopedia is different than other writing styles, uh, and it does take some time to learn. You know, the other comment I'd like to make is, you know, I have never submitted um, anything to a journal that wasn't, you know, covered in red ink and handed back to me um, multiple times for multiple re revisions. So, you know, when you come to Wikipedia, um, uh, you know, if you do get reverted, um, you know, it's it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, you know, you shouldn't get discouraged. Um, uh, you know, you just need to, you know, Try to figure out what went wrong. You could, you're more than welcome to reach out to me um, uh, and ask my opinion if, if that happens. Um, but you know, most importantly, you know, don't get discouraged. Um, um, you know, initial rejection is 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 very common within the publishing process, and you know, it occurs on Wikipedia from time to time as well. So, perfect. I'll hand it back to you, Jenny. So, um, uh, yeah, just to mention that a few students here in class took or chose the article to work on from the list that you created. So all, all of you guys are part of already of uh, Wiki Project Medicine, so you can be proud of yourselves for doing that. And uh, I think on that optimistic note, I would like to, to thank everybody, especially James, who woke up at 5 today, 5 a.m. to be with us, uh, and to Professor Ilan Hanna and to Dr. Neta Hussein, and to all of you for um, being here with us, and I hope you enjoyed the session, and uh, make sure you contribute to Wikipedia. So uh, thanks, everyone, and we are um, going, uh, we're finishing the broadcast now. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.